Today we'll be talking about weather fronts. Often if we watch the weather report on the news, they'll talk about a cold front, a warm front, and we're going to look actually at how these fronts can form and what they actually mean for our weather. A front occurs when two air masses meet. And basically, as air masses move around the planet, they bump into each other from time to time. And we can classify these fronts based on the types of air masses that are coming together. There's four major types of fronts, warm fronts, cold fronts, occluded fronts, and stationary fronts. And each of these different types of fronts can bring us different types of weather. Warm fronts are usually associated with periods of light rain and warmer temperatures. A warm front occurs as a warm air mass moves into a cool air mass. We know that warmer air is less dense and tends to rise up, so as the warm air comes in, it will rise up above the cooler air mass, giving us a little bit of rain, but no severe weather typically. Cold fronts, on the other hand, happen when the cold air actually moves into the warm air. And again, because warm air tends to rise up, in this case, instead of gently going up above like the warm front, the cold air actually pushes the warm air out of the way and forces it up quickly. Because of this, we tend to get rapidly cooling temperatures as well as severe rain and often thunderstorms from cold fronts. Stationary fronts happen when two fronts, or two air masses rather, actually come together and meet going in opposite directions. You might have a warmer air mass meeting a cooler air mass, but they push against each other. So a stationary front, if something's stationary, it means it's not moving. And stationary fronts basically do that. They just tend to sit in a place as these air masses push against each other. And because of that, we won't get heavy precipitation, but we do get extended periods of precipitation meaning if a stationary front's over an area, it might stay there for two or three days, dropping a great deal of rain over time. The final type of front that we're going to look at is the occluded front. And this one's a little less common, but basically what we have for an occluded front is a cooler air mass with a warm air mass behind it and a much cooler air mass moving very rapidly, pushing the warm air mass up over the cold air mass. So from this, again, we can get you know, fairly severe weather, uh, longer periods of precipitation as this lasts over time. Understanding these different types of fronts is going to be very important in future lessons as we actually work on predicting weather, looking at weather maps, and understanding how these different atmospheric conditions affect the weather that we have on a daily basis.